Hi friends, I'm Kelsey, pediatric nurse practitioner and mom. On today's episode of Parenthood Prep, we're gonna talk about the basics of feeding your newborn. So how much, how often, how do you know if they're getting enough? Those are the questions I'm gonna answer in this video today. The purpose of this video is to educate and empower you as a parent, but it is not specific medical advice. If you have specific questions about your child, please ask their own medical provider. Don't come to this video. I realized after shooting this video that it was pretty long, so I ended up splitting it up into two different parts. So today's video is going to be all about the really basics of infant feeding, and then next time, I have an episode that's more about specifics with bottle feeding, paste feeding, and spit up. All right, infant feeding. First, let's talk about expectations. Most parents, myself included, have this vision of a beautiful bonding experience they're going to have while feeding their newborn. And that experience is going to happen. I mean, it's certainly going to happen. Feeding your baby is an incredibly bonding experience and it can be beautiful and magical but it's also very normal and very common for feeding to be a source of stress, nervousness. You have all these questions. Are they getting enough? How much should they be eating? So if that's your experience, that's completely valid. And it doesn't mean that you're not bonding with your baby or that you're not gonna get to those magical moments later on. What should your newborn be eating? So for the majority of newborns, it's going to be either breast milk. There are additional benefits to breast milk as opposed to formula. So that is really the number one recommended thing to give your baby. However, um, formula is perfectly healthy and really uh, life-saving for a lot of infants. So if for whatever reason you've chosen formula or formula is just the better, better decision, healthier decision for you and or your baby, that's a great thing to offer them as well. But what you really wanna make sure is that you're offering them either breast milk, formula, but nothing extra. Four months old is the absolute minimum that most babies should get solid food introduced. There are gonna be exceptions here and there for you know, uh, children with medical complications or conditions, and that's gonna be directed by their doctor or healthcare provider. For the majority of infants, especially healthy infants, just breast milk or formula. There are some situations in which babies would need a supplement, such as breastfed babies. It's recommended all breastfed babies get a vitamin D supplement. Um, preemies oftentimes will get a uh, some additional supplements, such as iron. So that would again be directed by that child's own medical provider. Um, but for the most part, just worry about giving them that formula or breast milk and not introducing solids for quite a while. If you've got a newborn, you don't need to worry about that for quite a while. All newborns are expected to lose weight after birth. So that weight, that birth weight you get right after they're born, it's normal for the first weight when you take them into their first checkup appointment to be lower than that normal. And as long as it doesn't go too low and they start regaining that weight within a typical time frame, it's not something that we worry about at all. And who's gonna help you decide that? Your medical provider. So it's really important to be taking your newborn in to those uh, newborn and baby checkups so that their weight is being tracked and that you're checking in about all sorts of different things also. But for the most part, it's not the parent's job to worry about how much your baby weighs, exactly how much they're getting every feed um, at home. That's why you take them in so much to get weighed and uh, checked in on at your pediatrician's office. So it's your job to make sure you're feeding them um, often enough, if it's formula, you are offering enough, and just to monitor them overall, but not to worry about like the quarter ounce they didn't get here, or the spit up they did there, or that you don't think they're growing fast enough. You have a team that's worrying about all of that. So how often should you be feeding them? Every two to three hours, it's recommended to feed your newborn. So if you're giving them a bottle, either of pumped milk or formula, that would generally be every uh, two to three hours, you're offering them two to three ounces. 
Now, sometimes this varies, especially if you have a premature baby or a baby with special needs. So again, this isn't medical advice. Sometimes this is gonna vary. You may need a fortified or a special formula or a special schedule. But for a normal healthy baby, it's typically every two to three hours, two to three ounces, or if you're breastfeeding, you just offer them the breast. It can be a little scary to not know exactly how much they're getting from the breast, but most babies do a good job of getting what they need and things tend to work out almost all the time. And if they don't, you're gonna have that medical team that's gonna let you know what the problem might be, help tease that out, and figure out a way to get your baby what they need. If you are feeding your baby formula, the CDC does recommend in the first three months of life to take some special precautions when you are uh, preparing it to make sure it's sterile and isn't contaminated with bacteria. I'm going to link the exact directions to that down below in the show notes or the comment box, I think it's actually called on YouTube, show notes, I don't know, this isn't a podcast. Um, I'm going to link it in the comments box. And uh, the other option would be, be to get the ready to feed, so the liquid that's already mixed up, and that is sterile. So either that or taking some extra precautions when you're mixing up the powder is what you're gonna wanna do in the first three months of life. Feeding your baby every two to three hours is not meant to be some super strict prescription. What you really wanna do is feed your baby on demand. This means that you're looking at their hungry and fullness cues and feeding them as often as they're asking for it and need to be fed. Infants are gonna go through different growth spurts, so they're gonna have different days, different hours in the day even, where they wanna eat more, they're hungrier. And what we wanna do is supply the food for them when they're telling us they want it. So that every two to three hours or eight to 12 times in 24 hours is really a minimum. If your infant has gone a whole three hours without eating, you do want to try and offer them some food there then, either breast milk or formula. Uh, but if they're wanting to eat more often, that is okay too. Some classic hungry cues are essentially anything extra they're doing with their mouth. So if they're sticking out their tongue, smacking their lips, chewing and sucking on things like their hand. If they're looking around like literally they're looking for a nipple, this is called the rooting reflex where they have an open mouth and they're moving their head around as if to try and latch on something. Those are all cues that they are hungry. Now, all infants have a reflex to suck. So non-nutritive sucking, meaning sucking when you're not feeding, is something that a lot of newborns find really soothing and will do, such as sucking on a pacifier. That doesn't necessarily mean they're hungry. So if you've recently fed your baby and you offer them a pacifier and that really seems to pacify them and they seem very content, then it's likely that they didn't actually need to eat. They were just having that desire to suck. But really sucking beyond that or that really lip smacking, looking around like they're uh, trying to find a nipple or something to suck on, those are your classic hungry cues. Crying is considered a late sign of hunger, meaning they may have ex exhibited some of those other signs before, but because they weren't fed, they get to that hungry, where they're like really hungry and they really wanna eat now, so they're crying. Now, if your baby gets to the point where they're crying because they're hungry, it's okay. You cannot, as a parent, always be 100% attentive and read the mind of your newborn. So it's gonna happen that at some point your baby probably will cry because they're hungry. And it doesn't even necessarily mean you missed their hunger cues or weren't attentive. It just happens. And some babies, like my first child in particular, would go from content to really hungry, mad about it so, so quickly. And it was hard for me to pick up on those hungry cues. Now, on the other hand, some fullness cues can be falling asleep during feeding, um, unlatching from the nipple on the bottle or the breast, moving their head away from the bottle. Those are typical fullness cues or just acting really fussy. You put the bottle or, the, or uh, the nipple in their mouth and they're just fussy turning away. That probably means that they are not hungry at that point. Now, another note on the hungry fussiness now, hunger is not the only reason babies are gonna be fussy, right? They may be 
they may have a dirty diaper. There could be a number of things that are causing them to be uncomfortable. So every time your baby cries or fusses does not necessarily mean that they're hungry, but if they haven't fed it in a while, it's a good bet to go ahead and offer them some formula or a bottle of breast milk or to breastfeed them. Feeding your baby every two to three hours, day and night can be really exhausting. And most parents are eager for a time when they can space out those feeds. That's really gonna depend on your baby and their growth and what they're communicating to you through that. So it's a decision to make with your medical provider as to when you can space out those feeds and also when you can start offering them more if you're offering them bottles at a time to consolidate those feeds. So let's talk about pee and poop. So urine and stool output is really the primary indicator day to day that's gonna tell you if your baby is eating adequately. After about the, the like third day of life, so the first few days of life, it's normal to have a little, a little bit less urine output. But once you hit the third day of life, what's typical and normal is for a baby to pee at least six times in 24 hours, but likely more. Additionally, it's pretty typical for newborns to poop every time they eat. If that isn't the case with the, the poop pattern for your newborn, that can be normal. Some newborns will poop a little bit less, but we do want all newborns to be pooping um, pretty regularly, probably multiple times a day, depending on their individual um, situation. Because what happens is that uh, newborns are born with poop that's already formed in their intestines and it's called meconium. So the first few days of life, they're gonna be passing that meconium. And that meconium, it's dark and sticky and it's different looking than what their newborn poop will look like once they've been eating. Normal newborn poop looks um, anywhere from kind of like orangey to yellow to a little bit green. And it's gonna be really loose. Like it almost will look like, to somebody who, who's not used to seeing newborn poop, it can look like diarrhea. And it'll typically have like little flecks of more solid parts. Oftentimes we, oftentimes we phrase that as seedy because it almost looks like little like flax seeds in it, um, but not necessarily that color. Um, and so you're gonna transition from that meconium, dark sticky stuff to like the looser, lighter looking poop. And it's important for your baby to do that. One, because it shows that their GI system is working properly but also because it's important for babies to get rid of this substance called bilirubin. If that builds up and is too high, it can be dangerous for babies. And it's difficult for babies to do that because that substance, bilirubin, is normally processed through the liver and their liver is immature. It's not quite up and running like a normal liver would be. One of the ways that they get rid of bilirubin is through the gut. And so what we sometimes see with babies that have a slow moving gut, they aren't pooping quite as much in that first week or so of life, is that they have more of something called jaundice. Jaundice is a yellowed appearance of the skin that reflects a high bilirubin level, level because bilirubin is actually kind of a yellow color and it shows up on the skin. That's something that your medical provider is gonna be helping you monitor. They will check a level um, before you even leave the hospital if you have your baby in a hospital. So it's something that you know, your medical team is aware of and is gonna be looking out, of, out for you. Um, but I do think it's, it's just interesting and, to have some of that background of like why we are wanting them to poop and why that transition to the, um, to the more normal newborn poop is important and why we care about this yellow appearance of their skin. Hey there, me again, Kelsey from the day that I'm editing this video, just here to say thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this episode of Parenthood Prep and found it um, informative. If you liked it, please take the time to hit the thumbs up. If you would like to be notified of future episodes of Parenthood Prep, you can subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell. Have a great day. See you next time. Bye.